And that is this issue of the national sovereignty of the United States of America, which is being surrendered. We all know, we all know what's happening to the sovereignty of this country. It's being leached away, little by little by little. You see the United Nations talking about setting up a universal criminal court that can prosecute American soldiers without our permission. We see the IMF right now lending tens of billions, scores of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars, putting at risk the American people without the say-so of the Congress of the United States of America. Last fall, the most trusted man in America, Walter Cronkite. He got an award. He got an award from the World Federal Association. And he went up there to the World Federalist Association, and what did he say? He said, we Americans have got to have the courage to give up our sovereignty. We've got to have the courage to put our troops under UN command and get a world army to defend world peace, because that's where the world is gone. I'll give, I tell you what, I'll give Cronkite credit. He says out loud what Gore believes and what Clinton believes and what Stroke Talbot says out loud. Now what is exactly, what is this new world all of order all about? It is about a reversal of the American Revolution. The American Revolution was a bunch of farm kids and kid, and get men working in blacksmith shops and working in other jobs, standing up to the greatest army on earth in places like Lexington and Concord and saying to the whole world that forever, no matter what happens, we Americans We'll decide here and decide for ourselves our own destiny. The new world order is the reversal, the overturning of that revolution. That's what the end goal is. America is a rich province, part of their new world order. But I give you my word, if ever I stand up on that east wing of the Capitol and take my oath as President of the United States, when my hand goes up, their new world order comes crashing down. in the world which divide nations and peoples. The Great Wall is also a reminder that for almost a generation there has been a wall between the People's Republic of China and the United States of America. In these past four days we have begun the long process of removing that wall between us. We began our talks recognizing that we have great differences. But we are determined that those differences not prevent us from living together in peace. You believe deeply in your system, and we believe just as deeply in our system. It is not our common beliefs that have brought us together here, but our common interests and our common hopes. 
the interest that each of us has to maintain our independence and the security of our peoples, and the hope that each of us has to build a new world order in which nations and peoples with different systems and different values can live together in peace, respecting one another while disagreeing with one another, letting history rather than the battlefield be the judge of their different ideas. This is an historic moment. We have in this past year made great progress in ending the long era of conflict and cold war. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be. We have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. From 1945 and the end of the war through 1989 and the end of the Cold War, we had a worldview. Republican and Democratic presidents alike, from Harry Truman to George Bush, stood for freedom and stood for certain propositions that would make America strong and healthy and grow the middle class and shrink poverty and stand against communism. And after 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. And instead, it looks like we got a lot of disorder. We still, in, and after 9-11, we've been- With the end of the Cold War, Henry Kissinger pointed out in his superb book on diplomacy. He said, none of the most important countries which must build a new world order have had any experience with the multi-state system that is emerging. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. That was written in 1994, and it may be even more relevant today. The way we're gonna win over the long term is not just militarily, we've gotta win over uh, hearts and minds. And what that means is we've gotta invest in countries that uh, have no educational infrastructure and have no uh, means for young people to, to get ahead. We've gotta give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. The affirmative yeah. task we have now is uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order because the global order is changing again. And the institutions that ruled that worked so well in the post-World War II era for decades, uh, they need to be strengthened. Tonight, we renew our resolve that America will never be a socialist country.